Collider Movie Talk, Movie Talk Movie Fans. I'm your host, Sinead DeVries, and this is The Daily Show, where we bring you the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us this morning is Dennis Zen. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of Collider Movie Talk. It's Friday. Most people's Fridays are nice and relaxed. Ours are pretty busy. I also want to welcome back Sinead. Hi, guys. She is now a permanent member of the Friday Movie Talk team. Yeah, I'm excited. Super excited. Fridays just got better. Also here is Christian Harlock. What's going on? I'm also super excited because it is Schmodown Day. Yeah. We've got Mance and Merle today, and what a match that's going to be. Hi. <laughs> you go ahead and introduce me whenever you feel like it. <laughs> we can do it after the first segment if you want. All right, you guys. It's Mark Ellis. Oh. Hey, everybody. What an introduction. <laughs> um, uh, before we get on to our topics, I want to remind you that uh, on our website, Collider.com, we still have that Captain America Shield giveaway signed by the Russo brothers. I put a link in the YouTube description. Why don't we show We actually have it in studio. You're damn right. Vanna, Vanna White, yeah. can you please... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. I'm not going to guarantee that. I the, might drop. I'm not going to guarantee that this shield's going to be here for the giveaway by the end of the day, though. Ooh, too. it's nice and heavy. Look at that thing. Ooh. Oh, it's amazing. That's awesome. Look at this baby. Puts Riley's there belt to shame. Yeah. Look at this baby right here. I feel tougher holding this thing. It actually feels like it's real vibranium right there. It it's actually autographed by the Russo brothers, and it says Civil War on the other side, and That's the date so that cool. they signed it. So, um, yeah, this thing is uh, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I could probably do pretty well with this thing. All right, so guys, go to our website, Collider.com. I put the link in the YouTube description. I think there's a few days left on that. Uh, unfortunately, it's for U.S. residents only. I know a lot of people were complaining about that. I think it's for a shipping thing where they can only ship within the U.S. because it's pretty damn heavy. Captain America, man, you know? Yeah. It kind of makes um, sense. Keep it continental. <laughs> Before we get to the first news topic, one thing dropped today. People, are, Variety is reporting that Michael Keaton is actually back in the mix talking uh, about coming to Spider-Man as a villain. Sinead, do uh, you got more on that? I do. Having momentarily passed on the opportunity to play the next Spider-Man villain, Michael Keaton looks to have had a change of heart and is back in talks to join Sony's Spider-Man Homecoming. Variety first reported Keaton was being eyed to play the villain last month, but talks ended with sources saying the dispute occurred after Robert Downey was added to the cast to reprise his role of Tony Stark, and it looked as if the studio wouldn't be able to afford both talents. With Downey's deal now closed, however, insiders say that Sony and Marvel have now returned to Keaton and look to have found a way to make both parties happy. Spider-Man Homecoming will debut in theaters on July 7th, 2017. So before I ask Mark what he thinks about yeah, this, Dennis. Uh, are you going to be holding that shield for the whole show? He's taking it home. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, wait, am I not supposed to be holding it this long? I can, I guess I could put it away. All right. So it sounded wrong. Why don't you give us your thoughts on uh, Michael Keaton back in the mix for Spider-Man? I certainly will. I mean, look, this is this is nice news, but I'll put it away eventually. This is nice news because I love Michael Keaton. I want to see Michael Keaton in projects that I know I'm going to see. Him being a compliment in Spider-Man Homecoming, whether it's the villain, whatever he's going to be in, I love watching this guy act, so I'd want to see this. However, I stand by my opinion a couple weeks ago where when we first heard he was going to depart the project, it wasn't like a deal breaker for me. You know, would I love to see Michael Keaton be the villain? Sure. If he's not in there, some Somebody else is going to come in there. I'm cool with this either way. Michael Keaton is always a great addition to a cast he's in, so I'm excited about this, but it's not going to break my heart if it doesn't end up being true. Christian? It's going to happen. Uh, I think it's almost like take it to the bank. It's going to happen because if these reports indeed are true that they went back to him again so they could figure it out, they're not just going to go back to him so they can start talking to him and then somebody else. They want him. They want him to be in this movie. I think I agree with Mark that you don't need him in the movie. Otherwise, you'd scrap the project. But I do say that if they're going for him, they've seen kind of the buzz that it would be cool to get the old Batman in as a villain, I think. And yeah, now that Downey's going to be in it and they can close these two big actors. I can say it's a pretty much it's going to be a lock that Keaton's going to be in it. Yeah, if they're going back to him after negotiations kind of fell apart, uh, that means they both parties, he wants to be in it yeah. and they want him in it. For me, no, it's not a deal breaker of him not being in the movie, but the rumor of, of Vulture being the main villain, this makes me much more excited because Vulture never really interested me as a Spider-Man villain, but Michael Keaton playing 
the vulture potentially that makes me a lot more interested isn't it interesting that 25 years later after the first time a major studio backed up the truck and dumped a bunch of money on his front lawn and said please play this character and he said no now we're talking about michael keaton in a superhero movie again yeah. when clearly there's probably going to be more money involved and he might take it this time well the landscape is so much different now sure to where like you know you'd have whatever direction that batman franchise was going in when when they <laughs> wanted him to do more he's probably made a good decision by not doing it but now because the, the the superhero landscape is so much larger and there's so much depth to it and all you all these filmmakers are kind of coming to it that he's able to do this project it would be really cool to see him in this new landscape of superhero films all right all right what's the first topic while the fate of the members from the X-Men won't be revealed until X-Men Apocalypse hits theaters on May 27th, one particular mutant's return for another X-Men movie is the subject of the most speculation from fans, namely Jennifer Lawrence's Mystique. The actress's three-picture deal expires with X-Men Apocalypse, along with James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, and Nicholas Holt, and Lawrence is noticeably vague when speaking about a potential return. But in an interview with Entertainment Weekly, that all changed. Speaking of a possible return, Lawrence said, I would love to come back. I love the fans and I love the character. But then you realize how important your year is. Like how important three months out of your year is. I don't know. I shouldn't be that honest. She then added that it also might be up to her co-stars saying, Fassbender and McAvoy and I were all talking like, will you come back? I don't know. I'll come back if you come back. Fox should be terrified because the deal we made was like, if one of us doesn't come back, none of us are. Dennis, do you think Jennifer Lawrence will return to an X-Men movie based on these comments? I don't think so. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a Jennifer Lawrence fan. I'm not one of those people that thinks she's overexposed. But after seeing her in X-Men Apocalypse, she mailed that thing in. I don't think her heart is in it anymore. And I know she says she's like, oh, I'd love to come back. I love the fans and the characters. And that's nice for, for everyone to hear. But honestly, I don't think she's interested. However... The, the point she's talking about with McAvoy and Fassbender, I actually see both of those two guys returning with without her. Because I don't know their personal feelings about the franchise, but I know every movie they've been in, they are fully committed to it. And they're actually my favorite part of those last three movies. So I think they're going to return and she's not. Christian? Yeah, I think exactly the same thing. I Can you imagine the phone call? Fassbender's agent calls him and goes, listen to the deal I got you with Fox. Can't do it. Why? Well, because Jennifer Lawrence isn't coming back. What are you talking about? I got you the most money of your career. Nope. Promise J-Law, whatever. J-Law, that not going to happen. It's silly. It's like, yeah, they probably had this packed on set, but then they're going to come back because McAvoy um, and Fassbender both are really locked into these characters as well. I didn't see Apocalypse Now, so I can't speak on it, but from what I hear is from everyone is that she just doesn't, her heart doesn't seem to be in it. These comments seem to show she's not into it. Like... It was nice fan service, kind of politically correct answer up top. So we're like, oh, yeah, 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 of course. I love it. I love the fans. I love everything, too. But that's three or four months out of my... If another movie came along in those three or four months that she wanted to do that maybe could get an Oscar or something else, she wants to challenge herself a little bit more, she'll take those three or four months and use them for that. So it's not about I have free time. She just doesn't want to be Mystique anymore. And if that's the case, you can't blame her for that. She doesn't want to be the character anymore. But I don't think it's going to hurt the other two guys being in it. Yeah, I mean, look, deals between actors were made to be broken. And if last night's episode of the Schmoes No Live show taught us anything, <laughs> it's that even ironclad solidarity may not always last when push comes to shove. I think Jennifer Lawrence, I think there's a shot she is in a new X-Men movie. I just don't think she's going to have a role that is going to be all that dramatic or all-encompassing. She might show up. I mean, look, it, technically, uh, James Marsden and Famke Jansen were in X-Men Days of Future Past. Past, but they mm -hmm. kind of show up for a scene. Right. She might be in there for a scene or two. I just don't see her having a lead role in any X Men movie going forward because I'll stop short of Dennis's claim that she mailed it oh, in. She like, mailed that thing in. <laughs> from she, from uh, far, far away country, she mailed that see, thing I, in. See, she didn't it's lick a, a stamp. Yeah. It wasn't like snail mail. The UPS was involved in her performance in some way, or FedEx or DHL. She didn't commit to it 100%. The lines didn't really feel all that well delivered, but I still bought her as the character. It's like she's clearly on her way out with this role. All right, what's next? 
The latest trailer for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows is giving fans a look at the final showdown between the Turtles and one of their most anticipated new villains, Krang. Yay. The trailer singles the arrival of the movie, which is now just two short weeks away. The movie sees Shredder escaping custody and joining forces with mad scientist Baxter Stockman and two dim-witted henchmen, Bebop and Rocksteady, to unleash a diabolical plan to take over the world. Michelangelo, Donatello, Leonardo, and Raphael return alongside April O'Neil, played by Megan Fox, Vern Fenwick, played by Will Arnett, and newcomer Casey Jones, the hockey masked vigilante, played by Stephen Amell. Out of the Shadows comes to theaters on June 3rd. Christian, what are your thoughts on the new trailer for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Uh, thoughts are that it definitely looks the uh, same thing that I said about the other ones. It looks more like this, the, the cartoon that we used to see. It looks more like it's playing up to the fact that the turtle's actually going to be a part of this movie and not just kind of here and there. And, and I've said it a million times, but that scene in the elevator of the first, the, the most recent turtles is the movie I wanted to see. And I think that this trailer shows more of that, that we're going to get some of that. Um, it does feel like it was ripped out of the, the, the cartoon. So I think that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fans should be excited about that. I'm not overly excited about the movie yet, but I can come out pleasantly surprised. Mark? Listen to all the names that Sinead just read there. You got your Krang, you got Baxter Stockman, Bebop, Rocksteady, Casey Jones, Shredder. These are the guys that I want to see in a Ninja Turtles movie. I want it to feel like the early 90s cartoon. Is that going to be appealing cinema for everybody? even fans of Ninja Turtles? Maybe not, but it's going to make me really happy. That's why I'm looking forward to Out of the Shadows. These characters that I saw animated when I was a little kid, I want to see them on screen. I don't need Will Arnett. I don't need Megan Fox having huge roles. As a matter of fact, I hope we get more stuff like the elevator scene, yeah. and then you throw a talking pink brain in there as well. Mm -hmm. I am very excited about this movie. Will I be let down? There's a good shot, but I'm going into this thing with a positive vibe, Dennis. Well, I saw the movie last night, what? But, but I'm not allowed to talk Aww. about it, but I'll talk about the trailer, and the trailer this one's much more action focused yeah. a lot more visual effects a lot more krang in it mm -hmm. they're definitely they didn't try and cover some story or there wasn't a lot of sound bites they're just kind of throwing everything at you and i will say i will say this if you like this trailer you will like the movie because this is there, it's, it's a fair yeah. representation of the movie so if you like it you're gonna like the movie if you if you don't you probably probably won't so. you know we were talking about solidarity with the uh the story before let me ask you guys something do we really need Raphael? like he just seems to be more trouble than he's worth with the turtles i think if you wow. get the donatello michelangelo and leonardo you cut Raphael loose i think you got a much thanks jt I'm, I i'm just telling you it's a Raphael is crazy he's a loose cannon we don't need him on the turtles anymore wow Sinead, you watched this trailer what'd you think of it are you excited to see this movie um i mean i don't like to judge too much because I haven't seen the movie, but I thought the trailer for the most part is is pretty cheesy, I guess, kind of like over the top. But at the same time, the the comic was really cheesy, and that's why we loved it because it was super over the top. You mean the cartoon, the cartoon was the cheesy? Cartoon. The, the comic, comic book was actually yeah. sorry, awesome. not the comic yeah. book, the cartoon. And I mean, I watched the cartoon every single day with my older sister. We were obsessed. So it's, I definitely think that it's more authentic. And like Mark said, like all these characters that should make us all really excited because it is going to be more like the cartoon. But right now it just seems like kind of like over the top. I'm not sure how to feel about it. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. chat room's not happy with me right now. Yeah. There, there's a lot of fans of Raphael. Why? Because yeah. you said you wanted to kill one of the yeah. I'm not saying kill him. I'm just Cut saying like, like a lot yeah. of missions Drop would be would How be would he leave, though? Would he, he like get married and get a family yeah, sure. in the he country? Did, he's always had a thing for April. Mm -hmm. He's still yeah. Mikey's okay. girl. Then you kick him out of the turtles. Yeah, nice. Well, speaking of the chat room, let's check in with... Oh. Uh, it's not Wendy. Is that, is that Wendy over there? Uh, he looks a, oh, looks a, little, oh, a little pastier than Wendy. Yeah, a little, a little, Wendy. little less, uh, less attractive. But, but Cody, <laughs> him. look at not Wendy. Look at his, <laughs> look at his little <laughs> lower third there. That was the nicest so, um, intro I've ever had. Cody, in not Wendy Hall. What is the chat room saying about our main topics? All right, for the Michael Keaton thing, everyone seems to be into it. They're, um, they're suggesting maybe he's going to play the new J. Jonah Jameson, which would be pretty cool. Um, if it's not Vulture, or they also suggested Norman Osborn as a potential villain. Uh, for the X-Men news, they all pretty much hate it. Uh, they're all really mad at Jennifer Lawrence. They're suggesting recast the role, uh, even bring back Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Romaine. Mm. And then for Ninja Turtles, uh, they're not too excited about the trailer, but agreed a lot of people are really mad at Ellis right now. Uh, one person, <laughs> they're like, how dare you, Mark? Raphael is the emotional tension. Uh, although one person said it finally looks like a turtle movie worth going to. I so, agree. Yeah. Raphael was emotional tension. I also agree. I don't want emotional tension when I'm going on a mission against the Shredder. I don't need that in my life. All right, now it's time for buy or sell. Sinead, what do we got up first? 
Universal Pictures has released the newest trailer for The Purge, election year, the third film in the franchise that focuses on Elizabeth Mitchell playing a senator running for president on the platform of bringing an end to The Purge. When the annual Purge falls in the middle of her presidential bid, she becomes the target of government-sanctioned assassination attempts from those who want to keep the American tradition alive. Frank Grillo reprises his role of Leo Barnes from the second Purge movie with his character on a mission to protect Mitchell's character at all costs. Uh, at all costs. Excuse me. <laughs> Just one cost. Franchise creator James DeMonico returns once again to the director's chair. The Purge election year opens in theaters on July 1st. Mark, do you buy or sell the new trailer for The Purge? Well, I'm very excited about seeing The Purge election year in this trailer. I will buy it. It wasn't the overwhelming success that I thought the first trailer for election year was because that got me into the story enough. This one, I'm just happy they didn't give away too much. A lot of times with trailers, you'll see them and you're like, oh, I didn't need that second trailer. I didn't need those extra story points. We didn't get a whole lot of other things in here other than, okay, Frank Grillo, he's going to be some sort of security director for this presidential hopeful, and then stuff goes down because it is The Purge. And it also looks like the purge this if she's the one that ends the purge maybe this is the closing of what has actually been a pretty impressive trilogy i didn't like the first purge that much i thought the horror tone missed the mark and then when they turned it into an action punisher movie in the second one i was like this is the movie i want to see i think election year looks a lot more like two than one i'm gonna buy it uh i i liked it i i think it the best thing about it is it makes me want to watch the second one, which I haven't seen yet. I also kind of feel the same way about the first one, where where I like the concept, but I don't think they executed mm -hmm. it very well. And I like that they made it more of a, uh, you know, because that was just confined in one house. Now this is all on the streets and everywhere across the country. I like this campaign style propaganda of, oh, I purge, I purge. And like, you know, it's un-American to stay in and keep keep America great. I love that stuff. And Frank Grillo, I'm a, a fan of, and, and I, I, I like this Punisher style. Christian? I buy it, but I don't buy the old man at the end that said that he purged. There's no way that yeah. guy was purging. Um, but what I will tell you is that everything that you guys... I haven't seen one or two. I haven't seen either one of them. But what... I, everything that you guys have said about the tone is what I've heard from everyone is that the first one's more horror, the second one's more action. To me, this trailer looked like a mixture of both. It looked like there was a lot of horror elements really combined with an action film with Frank Grillo, who probably could have been uh, the Punisher, but I'm not taking John Barenthal is the best. But this is something to me that intrigues me to want to see this movie and go back and watch the first and the second one because I do think the, the, the premise is really cool and I'd like to see where this movie goes but I also agree with Mark that I think I got more from the actual story of what it's about from the last trailer as where this one is just more kind of cool creepy imagery. Yeah. It's a nice reminder the movie's coming out, and particularly for guys like you who have not seen The Purge 2 or even The Purge 1. Right. You all plan on watching this thing? You got about a month left. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I mean, because it, it's in July, we, st we still got some time, and I'll, I'll sure check out the on second cable. one. Yeah. Second really? one. It, it uh, sneaks up on you. See it. It's Janae, awesome. Janae, you watched the trailer finally. I know you were yeah. a little scared to watch it. Well, the first one freaked me out. Um, actually, I haven't seen... I haven't seen one or two, so I can't really say it freaked me out because I haven't even seen it. But <laughs> I love that uh, the so. concept alone, I think, is fantastic. I really do think that this is something so unique and a storyline we had never seen before. And I like the idea of the fact that there's somebody that is trying to stop this completely and how to do that is to become president and change the law but um i will say i was expecting it to be scarier based on what i know of the first two movies and i didn't think it was as scary so i probably could have handled it on yeah, my own but movie. i really appreciate you guys yeah we are here for you <laughs> shanae you. if a purge breaks out while you're watching the trailer, we're here to protect you. I, you know what? Think, I'll, I, I will protect I, you guys, too. Okay. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't think we need it. I think that she would be the first one to start, like, like stabbing killing people? us. I'd run Just, away. Guys, okay. everybody relax. We have a Captain America shield. <laughs> oh. The purge is to happen Oh, that's ever. right. I forgot about This is the best that. day for yeah. the purge to go down. Yes, okay. Um, All right, what's next? Yesterday marked exactly one year until Baywatch lands in theaters on May 19th, 2017, with production also announcing the wrap of production. Dwayne The Rock Johnson took to his social media Media, of course, announcing the completion of principal photography with Paramount also releasing the first official cast photo. The Rock's tweet celebrating the production said, that's an official wrap. We had a blast pushing the R-rated envelope on this one. I emoji, overexcited emoji. See you next summer. Baywatch also tells the tale of Johnson's by the books lifeguard Mitch teaming up with Zac Efron's hotshot Matt in order to stop an oil tycoon from destroying their beach. The movie also stars Alexandria 
Alexandra Daddario as Summer, model Kelly Rohrbach as CJ Parker. Original stars David Hasselhoff and Pamela Anderson will definitely be donning the red suits for an appearance. The movie is directed by horrible boss's helmer, Seth Gordon. Dennis, do you buy or sell the first official image for Baywatch? I buy this image not so much for the image itself, but it represents a movie for me that when it was first announced, I couldn't give a flying F about. <laughs> then they cast The Rock, and so I'm immediately interested. Then they said it's going to be R-rated. I'm, then I'm a- on board. Then Zac Efron, who's been great in the last two Neighbors movies as a like kind of a comedy sidekick. Then Alexandra Daddario, you sold me. So I'm on board for mm-hmm. this movie now. Christian? I couldn't agree with you more. Um, same th- when you first hear Baywatch, you're like, wait, what? Yeah. And then you hear that they're going to rate it R with this cast. And after seeing Neighbors 2, and I'm glad that this is the direction now that Zac Efron is going. Do, do Neighbors 2, then do another R-rated comedy, then try to do another switch because his career was starting to go like this. And he picked himself, he's hopefully picking himself back up. But this, I love this photo because this is going to be that tone. This is our crew. This is the one that we're going to get. I think that that first Red Band trailer is going to get everyone either on board or see you later. But I, I happen to think it's going to be let's go see this movie because that first Red Band trailer and The Rock is just a genius marketer in general. He knew how to construct that particular that that, that tweet or that Instagram post. He knew how to put that out there with the exact hey. We just pushed this to the R-rated maximum. You're not going to be able to wait. Mark? Yeah, I buy it because they got uh, apparently senior year Ellis to pop into the corner of that picture <laughs> over there. Um, and yeah, I mean, look, this movie, I totally agree with Christian. that We could see a trailer for this thing and be like, they totally missed the tone. It's a, t- it's a hard tone to lock down, but like, it's been done successfully with TV shows turned into movies before, like The Addams Family or like more recently 21 and 22 Jump Street. If you get that comedic tone locked down, you have an R rating, you got a lot of freedom to do whatever the hell you want. I trust The Rock. I trust Zac Efron in a comedy that town involved here if you get it right i'm gonna buy it and that picture i'll buy it for now and the rock has great comedic chops if you watch him in even his action movies anytime there's a moment of levity he actually pulls it off really well every saturday night live performance he's just the guy's a natural performer and he has that natural i mean you don't discredit him for for just because he started out as a wrestler i mean when you watch some of his promos when he was in WWE, they're hysterical he's one of the funnier wrestlers in like ever like the way that he would cut his promos and the amount of laughs that he would get throughout his career at the wwe his timing is it's on point and are we convinced now that he has cloned himself like (laughs) several times to be appear in all these movies ken knapsack made a joke last night on the news he's like i think the rock just uh shot a television show while i did that joke i mean he's doing so many different projects with ballers and there's i mean every we have at least one rock story per week about mm-hmm. something that he's doing. It's crazy. It's I need yeah. a nap after this show. Like that guy just keeps working constantly and he's in great shape. Like I don't know how the dude does it. Sinead, are you looking forward to a Baywatch movie? Yeah, I, I am. And I really love this photo a lot. I just watched San Andreas for the first time. <laughs> so fun. every time I see the two of them together, I have um, very vivid memories of that movie. But the thing I will say about The Rock is that I think that he is just so excited to work. And I, I think it shows, because he goes on his on his Instagram like every single day to like update all the fans, and I really appreciate that about him. So yeah, he's working a lot, but you can tell he's having a blast in all of his projects. Yeah. All right, what's next? After kicking off its release internationally on April 27th, Marvel's Captain America Civil War has now surpassed Disney's Zootopia to become the highest grossing film of 2016 worldwide with a total of $981.9 million in revenue and climbing. The sequel has snagged an international box office of $671.4 million, with $164.2 million of that from China alone. Domestically, Civil War has amassed a total of $310.5 million in just over two weeks of release, with more to come. Box office insiders say it's a pretty safe bet to say that Civil War is going to surpass Deadpool's top spot on the domestic chart with one question. By how much? Civil War is performing in line with Avengers Age of Ultron, with that film's $459 million domestic total seemingly in reach. Christian, do you buy or sell Captain America Civil War reaching Ultron's worldwide gross? I buy it. I think that it's still, I still think it's going to be pretty good. We we're talking about our box office predictions in just a little bit here. I think it's doing uh, really well over here. It's doing well overseas. I think that it's a better movie than Ultron, and I think that people um, will continue to go check it out, and it's going to keep building and tapping 
mean, I think it'll be the number one movie of the summer for sure, and I think it will catch Ultron's uh, worldwide. I'm actually going to buy that it's going to beat the domestic, but I don't think it's going to beat worldwide. The worldwide, because okay. it, it's got a, a still a long ways to go. Um, it's at what 978 million right now. Iron Man three is at number three for the MCU movies at 1.2. I think it's going to catch up with that. But Age of Ultron was 1.4 with the first Avengers 1.5. So I, I don't know if has it's it opened make, everywhere already. I think so. I think at least all the big markets. Yeah, Mark. I believe it has. That's why I got to sell yeah. it catching either the domestic or the okay. worldwide one because domestically, like, like there's so there's always if it wasn't in the summer, if it had a couple more weeks to just be the big movie in right. town, then it could potentially catch it. But I don't see it doing that kind of business with X Men Apocalypse cutting into a lot of the superhero dollar yeah, next week, and point. then there's always another train coming in the summer. However, I mean. It's still, it, it's really good news for Marvel. I'm sure they're not like going to cry if it doesn't quite get to Ultron numbers, but I don't think it's going to do it worldwide or domestically. Okay, we actually have some breaking uh -oh. news. Uh, Thor Ragnarok has some casting. Jeff Goldblum and Carl Urban are going to be joining the cast. Yeah, that's cool. So what do, what do you guys think about that's that? Good. Great, yeah, man. You I put like talent always adds to comic book movies. Who the hell is Jeff Goldblum gonna play? Is he gonna be more like a scientist, like he is in Independence Day? Is he gonna be just like a no villain? I don't want to see him as a villain. I don't like him as a villain. I I, I don't. I, I'm not that well versed in the villains of the Thor universe, other than what I've seen on the movie. Yeah. So I, I don't know if he does perfectly fit into a villain. He could be like a you know twisting his mustache kind of plotty guy. Like maybe he turns into the fly in the second half. I don't know. <laughs> but I I Carl Urban's great. Jeff Goldblum is the one I'm really really excited about. I am too, but I. I actually am a little bit more excited about Carl Urban, I think, because I want to. I hopefully it's it's a a role that will continue for him that he can get more into the uh, because Jeff Goldblum, it's going to be like a Rene Russo situation. You'll you'll be happy to see him. He'll probably knock it out of the park in his performance. But how much growth is he going to have throughout the Marvel Cinematic Universe? I think Carl Urban's a guy that kind of talent that can continue to do that and hopefully they give him a character because I keep talking about Dread this week and it keeps coming up but I, I think the guy needs to do more stuff because he was in that sh horrible loft that just it wasn't his fault but man that movie just probably took his his confidence down he's probably oh I can't believe I signed on to do that movie but now he's he may hopefully able to do more things he's got Star Trek coming out also I just love that you coined the phrase this is a Rene Russo situation we need to use that as much as possible yeah, here we should like going to lunch like I man this clearly this looks like a Rene, Rene Russo, Russo situation, situation yeah. here I, I'm happy at both about both of them yeah. what their parts are confirmed oh their oh, parts, parts are confirmed what? Okay, we've got, Keep reading, Dennis. Uh, Keep reading. Their parts are confirmed, and we're about to hear it right now. I also have a Captain America shield. Yeah, I'm yeah. just looking at the press release. Yeah, I mean, they confirmed uh, Tisa Thompson. Okay, quick bet. Do you think Tessa Thompson's Thompson? a good guy or a bad guy? Well, Tisa Thompson, we already knew. But I, think I think he's going to be. playing a character. I'm going bad. The Grandmaster. Yeah. Who's who's uh, Jeff Goldblum playing? Oh, Grand Grandmaster. Grand that that doesn't sound is good. That, that sounds bad. Is that that historically, that's not a T good title to have. Tisa Thompson's playing Valkyrie, and Carl Urban is Scourge. I don't know. That doesn't sound like a great name to have. Maybe like, they're all on the same team, but they're bad guys. I mean, you don't nickname your buddies like, oh, we're going to Vegas with Scourge. Yeah. Like, like yeah. it doesn't really sound like a fun name to <laughs> right. have, so maybe he's evil. The, the, and then it, we're, we're going to Vegas with Grandmaster and Scourge. <laughs> like, get arrested, dude. Get out of there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right, let's move on to the next topic. Sony has released the latest poster and green band trailer for Sausage Party, the animated comedy that focuses on a group of supermarket food that learn the terrible truth about the fate they'll be subjected to upon purchase, being taken home and eaten. Sausage Party is the first <laughs> R-rated CG animated movie that features the all-star cast of voices that include Seth Rogen, Kristen Wiig, Jonah Hill, James Franco, Paul Rudd, Edward Norton, and Selma Hayek. The film opens later this summer on August 12th. Mark, do you buy or sell the new Sausage Party, Party trailer? Oh, it's a huge buy for me, man. This is right in my wheelhouse. And you know why it's a huge buy is because the Green Band trailer still made me laugh a lot, and I like the story it's telling. Like, with a movie like this, you'd figure it needs to rely on the Red Band trailer to really hook you. And yes, I saw the previous Red Band trailer. This Green Band, while it's not showcasing, obviously, everything that they're going to be doing in the movie, it made me laugh a lot. I am so excited about this movie in August. Christian? Um, I'll buy this trailer because I think that it it tells you the story and it does give you the premise of what it's about and you can still say oh this can be entertaining but I really it, it the humor is in that red band trailer sure, because that's sure. where all the big crazy the, the, the way that you're gonna get laughs in that theater is from the stuff that shouldn't be in an animated film the the save a private Ryan stuff the cursing uh, when when he's getting peeled and screaming out of the top of his lungs 
But I will say that this, it, it still made me interested in the movie, but I also, because I knew what's behind all these jokes. I'm going to buy it as well. I Yeah, it's not as funny as the Red Band trailer, but it still captures the spirit yes. and essence of what the movie's going to be. I'm still concerned some kids are going to like see this Green brand Band trailer and think that, hey, I want to go see this Sausage Party movie and try and convince their parents to watch it. Oh, that was my watch hope. It. I saw Angry oh, Birds hoping. last night. And, uh, Did they and, show it before? And they had a bunch of trailers for animated movies. And no, they didn't no, have it. I was so I... hoping the Green Band would show because like this Green Band, the job of this trailer is to hook an audience that didn't see the Red Band trailer. If you just go to see a normal movie you can run this trailer before that so it's going to get a wider look they're not going to show it before any other movie <laughs> no. they Kids movies, not, no. i wouldn't be they probably won't even show the green band trailer and, i don't and see the point right? no I, I assume that you're probably going to get the red band trailer before neighbors too it makes a lot of sense to do that I mean, ninja turtles you show the no red because you fault because that's false advertising because then you're asking for trouble if you're showing it before kids movies because even ninja turtles is a movie that a lot of kids are going to see and you start showing this Green Band trailer and then they want to see it, that's, you are false advertising the movie. Ah, fine. Then let's just give every kid a trophy. and just. Well, it's rated R, right? So they technically aren't allowed to show it, mm. right? They, they can, can show, show the Green, Green Band, Band if they want. Even yeah. if it's rated R? Yeah, yeah. because it's oh. a Green Band trailer. I mean, you could show any yeah, trailer. That's why I think, I think it'll make it into more theaters, not necessarily like, like animated movies, but just like a normal movie you go see that's PG-13, like maybe mm -hmm. X-Men Apocalypse or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I could you see something see, like that, but yeah. it's definitely, TMNT is, is more for kids, so I don't see that happening. Happening. And most of the trailer is very similar to the Red Band. They cut out the cussing. Yeah. They did have some extra scenes with the touching of the tips or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sinead, what do you think of this trailer? <laughs> um, I definitely think the Red Band trailer was funnier. I laughed a lot harder in the Red Band trailer. Um, but yeah, the, the tra this trailer is fine. What is so funny? Go back to her picture. Oh, stop <laughs> it. I didn't do it. But I mean, just, this is a horrible picture. It's not the Who best put that image. in there? Did it Ray it. put that yeah, in there? The right. bottom left. Yeah. Don't don't the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know where that sausage has been. Um, I really and I re I love speaking of that sausage, but I love how the the slogan or whatever you call it it says a hero is rising. I think it's so clever and like the comedy and the the writing is really great. All right, get it out of your head already. Uh, you're bringing attention to I'm it. I'm sorry, it's right there. I couldn't help it. It's right there. Okay, do Take it again, a bite. You guys. See what it tastes like. It's Anyways, a sausage. the movie is the movie looks great. <laughs> Have a bite. Go to All the right. next story, please. Let, let, let's check in with uh, Not Wendy over there. <laughs> a bum! Not Wendy's doing great, guys. Uh, as far as The Purge is concerned, the, uh, most people hate the first movie, but they really like the second one, so they're excited for the new one. Uh, as far as Baywatch, pretty much 95% of the comments were just saying how excited they are to see Alexandra Daddario in it. Uh, for Civil War, they said it in, they hope it passes Age of Ultron because they think it deserves to. And everyone's losing their mind about Thor, mostly about Goldblum and Carl Urban. And then for Sausage Party, everyone likes the Red Band trailer but can't stand the Green Band. And one person says, I can't wait for stupid parents to bring their kids to it. And <laughs> yeah. finally, one person said, who is this 10-year-old sitting in front of Wendy's camera? Oh, <laughs> that, that might be the best comment of yeah, the day. Yeah. See, I think Cody could play that sausage if they do like a live on ice tour. Right. I think Cody's got the look to play. Congratulations, you right. could be a sausage. Thank you, thank you. Loved you in Civil War. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, now we're at the point where we have our weekly Friday segment, Box Office Predictions is where brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters is where we try and predict the top five movies coming out this weekend. Uh, Christian, what, what do you got for your top five? Okay, so at number one, I'm going to go with Angry Birds. I think just barely beating out number two, which is going to be Civil War. Number three, I have Neighbors 2. Uh, number four, I have Jungle Book. And at number five, I have The Nice Guys. Mark? It's a very good list, Christian. Thank well you, done. I'm going to go different. All I right. think Angry Birds is going to be number one. Yep. I think it's going to edge out Neighbors 2. I think Civil War is going to be three. I think Nice Guys is four. And then I'll have Jungle Book at five. I think that Nice Guys is going to take more dollars away from Neighbors 2 than it will from Angry Birds. So I think that's why. Because in a normal vacuum weekend, I would have Neighbors 2 being the top moneymaker. I just think Angry Birds is going to just get over that edge. Okay, I thought we would have two similar ones, but uh, mine is different. I actually have, I know, I think most people are predicting Angry Birds number one. I'm going to go with Civil War. I think it's going to take the Ooh. number one spot again. Then Angry Birds, Neighbors 2, Nice Guys, and then Jungle Book. Mm -hmm. um, uh, before we get on to Mailbag, a lot of you guys have been tweeting us saying that we had forgot uh, one of the movies that were opening this weekend, uh, which is 
Angry Birds. So we're going to talk about that. Sinead, can you let us know about that movie? Absolutely. Flightless birds lead a mostly happy existence, except for Red, voiced by Jason Sudeikis, who just can't get past the daily annoyances of life. His temperament leads him to anger management class, where he meets fellow misfits Chuck, voiced by Josh Gad, and Bomb. Red becomes even more agitated when his feathered brethren welcome green pigs to their island paradise. So I saw this movie about a week ago, and I thought it was decent. I enjoyed it. It wasn't like Lego movie where it was like joke, 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 joke. It was like it had some jokes, some hit, some didn't, and then there'd be kind of a lull or a break. Um, there's a bit of crude humor in it, and you yeah. kind of saw it in the trailer with the, the eagle peeing in the lake, and there's some other stuff in there. I don't know if... I mean, I think kids are going to love it, but I don't know about those that crude humor part of it. Christian? I haven't seen it yet. You guys uh, have. Um, I just knew I from listening to what you had said and what some other people have said. At first, I was thinking about taking my daughter, but at four and a half, what I'm hearing is a little too crude for her. So what I will say is the fact that this came from an app and that it, they did put together a trailer that at least looked like, okay, they actually made a cable movie out of this thing, but I can't speak on it as far as a movie goes, but I think that the trailer did sell this could be an interesting animation film. Mark, it is not horrible. Uh, it's not really that <laughs> well, good. That's either. the quote they're going to put on the poster. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is not horrible. It's not horrible. I mean, look, the big question going into this movie is again: Can you take an app on your phone and make it into some sort of a story and a plot line? Yeah, you can do that. And I bought into that. I like how this bird read. He's he, he's he's had a rough life, and that's why he's so angry. I think my biggest issue with the movie and our review on Schmoes is about to go up as soon as I get off the show, so I can upload it. Is I I'm not sure Jason Sudeikis who I love and I think is very talented, was the right voice for an angry bird. He's a little more like sarcastic and witty. Like Louis... Uh, no, uh, I, I was thinking like, like like a late 90s Adam Sandler where he just has such a quick rise to anger might have been a better mm. type of choice for the bird that gets angry. Yeah. But... Um, like Louis Black. Uh, Louis Black would yeah. have been a great show. I wish I'd said that. Like, Damn, you should have been in the review. I uh, yeah. So I, so I can't recommend it. I think kids might like it, but kids also might rather just play Angry Birds on their phones. Okay. All right. So that's Angry Birds opening uh, today. Uh, uh, now we're on to mailbag. You can uh, email us at collidervideo at gmail.com. We'll answer them here on Movie Talk throughout the week or on our weekend mailbag. What do we have first? Harrison writes, hello, Collider crew. I've been a fan for the past few years and love listening to you talk about movies. My question is in regards to DVDs versus Blu-rays for older movies. I'm finally at a point where I want to build my movie collection. However, I'm unsure whether I should buy Blu-ray or DVD. When it comes to buying older movies, do you personally buy them on Blu-ray? If so, does it change the quality of the movie? I buy my movies on Blu-ray still. I have some older movies. I don't know, I don't know what you mean by older, like just you know, 10 years ago, 20 years, 30 years ago, but I have like a Clockwork Orange on Blu-ray that was from the 70s, Lawrence Arabia, 1960s, uh, Full Metal Jacket, not as old, but in the 80s, and those definitely benefit from from DVD to Blu-ray. They're, they're, they're almost like night and day. However, like a movie like I have His Girl Friday from 1940 with Cary Grant. It's a black and white film. It's shot on a four by three aspect ratio. I have not bought the Blu-ray of that. I just don't know if there's any benefit to buying a Blu-ray for, for a movie that old. Christian? I agree. I think that it just depends on the size of the movie. Like, for example, like the original trilogy of Star Wars looks great on Blu-ray, you know, and it's there's there's some movies that really work with the transfer, and there are some, like, the ones you mentioned, like smaller films that may, not necessarily do, but also would still look cool if you did it, just because the technology in general and, and how it just transfers onto the screen. So I don't necessarily go back and buy all of them like for example i just i didn't have the lion king on um on blu-ray we were watching it on dvd and it, it was fine i'm sure the transfer looks great but i mean i have an astonishingly low amount of actual physical movies you have nothing in your apartment i literally have boxes that i have yet to unpack i don't see a reason why you need to go to dvd unless you can't get it on blu-ray i if you're building your home movie collection i think you want to go with whatever the newest premiere technology is because yeah. look the bad news is eventually something else is going to come along yeah. and replace blu-rays and you're gonna have to buy all those movies again if you want to physically hold them but right now blu-ray is the forefront of technology it's the divics of our time so go ahead get the blu-rays if you can't get it on blu-ray or if it's a really old movie where it doesn't matter and it's a lot cheaper to get on dvd then have at it on dvd all right what's next 
Um, Keen writes, when I was a kid, my dad gave me permission to see my first scary movie without warning from 1980. If I promised not to have any bad dreams, I said, yes, of course. And the next three weeks were full of bedwetting and bad dreams. So my question is, what scary movie gave you the wet bed? Keen, your fan from Denmark. <laughs> um, you were very brave to, yeah. to ask that question. So I'll turn it over to Mark. What, what, what was a movie that, that, that caused the same problems for you? Without warning from 1980, <laughs> that sounds like what they said when I was born. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> everything <laughs> that encompasses the day of my birth on July 7th, 1980. I, uh, my first time really being scared of a movie was, I saw The Exorcist and I was actually too young to process the psychological elements of that. So I just thought it was funny that this girl was puking on everybody. Then a couple years later, my aunt, me and my older sister tricked my aunt into taking us to go see Pet Cemetery, And we were like, no, 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 our parents be cool with it. So we go and my God, that movie warped my mind in a way that I've never been able to recover from. The sheets got burned the next day. And it's not the, the lore in it. It's not the burying a cat and it comes back to life and kills everybody. It's the subplot of Zelda. That's all I'm going to say, but Zelda in that movie was my first real fright and definitely made some sheets yellower than they should have been the next morning. Christian, what movie gave you the wet bed? Uh, none, but I will say the one that scared me for sure um, was the first Nightmare on Elm Street before Freddy started getting into stand-up comedy. Um, <laughs> like he And I, I liked all the other ones too, but the first one is scary. Like you just when the, the arms, when they reach out and the fact like you just going to sleep that night, you're like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> what, what, what's going to happen if, if I do? Is this character going to come in? Because he wasn't cracking jokes at that point. Um, so I, I just remember all the imagery in that movie. I'd say Wes Craven really scared the crap out of me with that one. For, yeah, for me, it's a movie that made me wet the bed, but uh, I was traumatized for about a week having nightmares watching James Cameron's Aliens. Oh, Just yeah. because the, the chest bursting scene of the aliens coming out, I freaked out from that, which is kind of ironic because now it's one of my favorite sci-fi action movies of all time, and I watch it all the time. But when I was a kid, for, for a week straight, I was just like, like, oh, my God, is that going to happen right. to me? Is it going to happen to my parents? <laughs> is it going to happen to my family? Just stay away from Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sinead, what, what movie gave you the wet bed? <laughs> well, stop it. <laughs> Can we put the sausage picture back up? <laughs> I knew it was coming. I thought about it. Damn it. Damn it. You got me back for Just uh, a little bit quicker. Louis Black. Just a little bit Lewis quicker. Black. Um, I'm about to show my age really hard. Um, oh, come on. But I remember being horrified after seeing. Bring it on. The <laughs> Ring. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, my sister and I went to see it. My parents were actually out that night. So we we're like, well, just drop us off at the movies and then we'll just come back. We'll get a ride. And so Kelly and I stayed up all night until my parents got home. They had gone downtown Chicago. Neither one of us could go to sleep. So we sat in my parents' room, literally on the bed, refusing to move for hours until my parents got home. Because my thing with scary movies is I can actually watch people like stabbing the hell out of each other and killing each other, but possession and like uh -oh. evil ghosts and demonic things scare me so bad read the next story <laughs> <laughs> the ring is one of those things too the ring really scared me a lot and the ring did the kind of fear where you're worried about wetting the bed i didn't but you're worried about that and then you have that paralysis fear which is something like paranormal activity particularly three did to me with the oscillating fan yeah, trick yeah. or signs remember the first time you see the oh, alien man. in signs yeah. i saw signs at night and i parked my car out by the woods to walk into the theater so as i'm walking towards the woods i'm like really walking lightly after that just making sure i get to my honda Civic in time. Just throw some water on them. Yeah. <laughs> Poor alien was just shopping at the mall. Yeah. Just walk out of the, they should they should have sold super soakers on the way out yeah. of the signs movie. All right, guys, that's it for a mailbag. We're gonna take your live Twitter questions. Just tweet us at Collider Video and Sinead will pick out a few of those. What do we got up first? Ainsley tweets, Do you think Ghostbusters can work as a horror comedy similar to Zombieland? Uh, I think that that's what they're trying to do, at least from the last trailer, mm -hmm. trying to go a little, maybe not horror, but a little more of the, the supernatural element, because the first one, the first trailer, trying to go straight comedy. This one, they added a lot more of the visual effects with the ghosts, and, and I think they're trying to get that tone. I don't know if it's actually going to work or not. Some of the ghosts were scary in the first Ghostbusters, at least, you know, dated now, but when you saw it back then, it was, it was scary. They're standing on people's shoulders and taking pictures with them in this one. I think they're still going for the comedy in it. It's just I, I would have liked the happy the balance between the two of them if that was the case. So no, I don't think they are. I think they're playing. Sure, they're going to have the special effects and the supernatural element in Ghostbusters, but I think that it's it's 
skewing way more towards comedy than the balance of the two. Yeah, Supernatural doesn't necessarily indicate horror, and that wasn't really a selling point of the first Ghostbusters, even though there was some scary right. stuff to look at. And even in Ghostbusters 2, there's a couple frightening images, but here, I don't think they're even going for that. I think no. it's more like using ghosts as a avenue to have a fun romp with. Like, we see these colorful-looking ghosts. This is more like a Slimer ghost. You know, then it was like that librarian at the beginning of the first Ghostbusters right. when this is a scary looking woman. All right. What's next? Fiend X tweets. Have you heard any updates on John Wick 2 and Schmodown predictions, please? <laughs> mm. uh, For John, John Wick 2? <laughs> John Wick, yeah, he's performing. Uh, I don't think there's any updates for me. I know Frosty had interviewed Keanu Reeves and, you know, he talked about maybe doing another movie. And I know it's set in Rome and we're going to have that. Maybe a... I'm kind of hoping for a spinoff for what was the, the Continental. Called, Continental. Yeah. And we had some casting news recently. I think Lawrence Fishburne joined the cast yes. as well. So that, that's good news. Like 2017, at, isn't it? Yeah. yeah it's next not year. this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it, it's exciting. And as far as the Schmodown goes, well, the matchup today, I mean, this thing, this it's, it's one of these ones that has been brewing forever. And yeah. the winner of this gets to face Mark Riley for the championship belt. It really is too. And I know some people like for last week, we had two more unknown guys where it was like Jeff Snyder mm -hmm. and El Miami, which is still it, it, uh, an opponent as somebody came out of that match looking pretty good as far as in the contender. But this one coming up today with Scott Mance, who knows his stuff and Dan Merle, who is the movie fights champion. A lot of, I mean, they're, they're, those are two potential great title matches. Scott Mance versus Mark Riley, Dan Merle versus Mark Riley. I, I, I'm so torn between the two. I give the slight edge to Dan Merle, but I can see Scott Mance having another one of those uh, just, you know, encyclopedia performances. Yeah, I, I, I give the edge to Merle as well. Yeah. I, Scott Mance is great, and if he gets a category like movie dates, look out. But I, I just think Dan Merle has too much of a collection of movie knowledge over all genres that he's going to end up beating Mance, even though Mance is a great competitor. Dan? Oh, Dan. I, I think I'm... Dennis? I'll give a slight edge to Mance. I think uh, his encyclopedic knowledge of a lot of those movies. I mean, he he met, brings up a lot of movies that I've never even heard of. So yeah. I'm going to give him a slight edge. You Sinead? got one, Sinead? I don't know enough about these guys, honestly. I Scott Mance yells like this. <laughs> I mean, I know them, but I, no. I don't know. I don't know who's going to win this one. I'll tell you this: when, when Mance may not be the best at movie knowledge, but when the lights are brightest, that's when that dude shows up. He the knows place, a so. lot. I wonder what are they saying. I'm curious what they're saying. Who they think's going to win? I'm not psychic. I'm not like Rogue or somebody oh, like that. Oh, you don't know. All right. No. <laughs> All right. What's next? <laughs> Dylan Davidson tweets: Any chance that Lucasfilm will use Marvel's de-aging CGI for flashback scenes for the older characters? The Benjamin Bun Button, Button technology? Yeah, yeah uh, let's get Benjamin which, Button a vest and a blaster. Old, for which old oh, oh, for Star Wars. For uh, any of them. Um, they, they might down the line, but I don't know if they need to do it right now. How do they do that? Like, I remember when we saw Terminator Genesis, mm -hmm. and then... Spoiler alert in Civil yeah. War, but like, how do they? How do they make? There's a seminar at the Apple Store Ant in about an hour. Yeah, yeah, Ant-Man. They do it with Michael Douglas. Do I know. Like, I don't even understand yeah. how they do. A lot that. of zeros insane. and ones lined up in the right way. It's very technical. And that's, Something I'll never understand. But this is the young <laughs> version of this. Like, eventually, we're going to get. This is going to just. This is going to look bad to us. Yes. As where they're going to be able to just like recreate a young Bruce Willis and be able to do another Die Hard movie. You know, they're going to be able to do that. That that's coming, and I think. It's, if they need to use it, I don't think they're going to do it just to do it in Star Wars, but if they need to do it, it's certainly... It's and and right now, the technology is limited. That's why they have these short scenes with them because it you, there's it's still noticeable, yeah. right? It's, it's not perfect. And once they get to that point where it is actually indistinguishable, yeah. that's when you know they'll start having maybe whole movies of... Because yeah. of... it started with Jeff Bridges and Tron, yeah. and that looked terrible. Yeah. Uh, the Arnold one looked good mm -hmm. the michael douglas i thought looked really that good that was probably my favorite one michael yeah. douglas in ant-man mm -hmm. the the one in civil war that is when i was watching it and i was like well yeah it's noticeable but for the way that it's used and what ultimately the reveal is it's like okay so it, it can afford to look that particular way because of what is supposed to be happening in that scene yeah i mean i even think even more so than the terminator jenny smith fight where it's ambitious because it's young arnold versus old arnold i think seeing robert downey jr in that scene was the biggest trial that that technology has had yet yeah. the irishman is going to be a huge test i mean martin scorsese directing a movie where these guys are flashing back to younger days and they're going to use that as probably an intricate part of that film 
film. It could work in Star Wars if for no other reason that you could have a quick flashback. And we know that recently if you have a flashback or a force vision, it's just a lot of quick cuts. You don't need to necessarily have that technology be looking that great for a long period of time. Just very snappy stuff. The other question is, will they use it for Indiana Jones? Because they could do it if they wanted to have, if they don't want Indy to be the age that Harrison Ford is and they want to take 10 years on him. It's Maybe. just that that movie doesn't come out till 2019. That's so they're saying. just kicking back yeah. and being like, let's see where the technology yeah. goes. All right, what's next? Bryce Ratliff tweets, Nintendo just announced they plan on making films in the next few years. What films would you want to see? That was Nintendo? Mm -hmm. yeah. Nintendo. Obviously Super the Tetris Mario trilogy. Oh. Well, Super Mario. <laughs> Legend. I'm actually more interested in a Legend of <laughs> Zelda movie yeah. than I am a Super Mario Jim. Brothers movie. I think Super Mario Brothers lends itself to an animated thing. I think Legend of Zelda could be a live action and also interested more in the story of that. Punch out. Mike Tyson. <laughs> well, you would have to just probably just do punch out. I mean, because Mike Tyson's yeah. punch out at the time, you know, but they just they came out with a punch out version, I think, after after Tyson went through his legal problems. <laughs> so they took him out. Which he had a few of a them. A few yeah. here and there. I'm going to go Ninja Gaiden, man. Mm -hmm. Give me one of those. Are that game is awesome. They might be. I think uh, possibly. No, there was Shinobi, Shinobi. Sega. Shinobi. Sega's Shinobi. doing Shinobi. Shinobi. Maybe yeah. Ninja Gaiden. Metroid. Is another right. one? Metro right. would be sweet. Uh, Mega Man. They made like 80,000 Mega Man yeah. movies, so maybe it's time he gets a movie. Dr. Wily is ready. All right. All right, what's next? Kyle tweets, what movie would you like to experience watching for the first time again? Empire Strikes Back. Oh, that's a good one because you don't know what yep. the review. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, Usual Suspects. Seven. Uh, you know what? The jokes hold up so well in Monty Python and the Holy Grail, but... I can't imagine getting to see that movie for the first time and not know any of that stuff, not know that the Black Knight scene is coming or any of that quick dialogue. is coming. That, that movie floored me so hard the first time I saw it. I'd probably go with a comedy like that or like Dumb and Dumber. I think the first Lord of the Rings, uh, Fellowship of the Rings, just because at that time I wasn't expecting much out of it. And when I saw it, I was like, wow, this is a whole, this is going to be a trilogy. We're going to see this the next year. So I wouldn't mind seeing that for the first time again. Sinead, do you have a movie that you would want to see for the first time? Um, the Ring. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, actually, someone asked me recently if I would watch Titanic with them, and they'd never seen it, and I, like, refused. I don't think, like, for me, when I think about having to watch a movie again, it's because I'd want to watch it and not feel like I've seen it a billion times or be able to sit through it without getting annoyed. And may maybe Titanic, because I don't think I can ever watch that movie again, at least. You've seen it too many times. And it's just like, once you've seen it once, I mean, like, that's like a whole day. <laughs> Were you one of those people that bought, like, the VHS when it came out and watched it over and over and over again? I actually, again? like, I went to go see it in theaters. I was like five or six. Oh, okay. And I went to see it Keep in... forgetting how young you are. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. I'm really sorry. <laughs> 5%. I have a friend, uh, Justine Marino. She's a really funny comic. She saw Titanic in the theater, the initial run, 17 times. Oh and then she added two to the total when they re-released it. So now she's seen it 19 times in the theater. And it's like a three-hour movie. It's yeah. a three-hour movie. It's, a, it's like two of a normal movie. So wow. she's seen it actually 38. She's seen a normal movie 38 times, the same exact thing. It's incredible. Oh. All right, what's next? <laughs> Kevin tweets, in honor of JTE, what is the worst betrayal in film? <laughs> oh, man. So to give some preface yeah, give to a, that. Give, give some context Yeah, for I got to let people know. Uh, so last night on the Schmoes show, um, I had a little information. So if you guys have been following the Schmodown in the team championship, myself and Mark, we played against Box Office Breakdown. They've been a team for a very long time. And we waxed them. I found a, some information that JTE had reached out to Clark Wolf to be his new teammate unbeknownst to Finstock. He didn't tell Finstock that he was shopping for no. a new teammate. So we brought it up on the show, on the library. You can watch that moment. It's on the channel right now. But it just, and Finstock was not thrilled, to say the least. And so people have been calling JTE kind of Benedict Arnold over here. So um, what is the, the betrayal? I, we talked about this the other day, too, and I'll bring it right back. And it's Robert the Bruce on, uh, on William Wallace. For sure, that, that that betrayal. This is everything the dude was fighting for. He was he was fighting for for Scotland to the guy that could have been the king to unite all the clans, and the guy stabbed him in the back. Yeah, it's really good. I was thinking of uh, of a historical one as well that you'll see in, in Young Guns too. When Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid are like they're just riding the trail together, they're just boys, and then all of a sudden Pat Garrett is like, Nah, you guys go out. I'll I'll just be here chilling, might open my own restaurant. Next thing you know, they hire Pat Garrett to track down Billy the Kid, yeah. and it's William Peterson versus Emilio Estevez. 
Uh, in the movie I mentioned earlier, Aliens, Paul Reiser's character. Oh, yeah. He was so Weasley. Good one. I, I, yeah. I remember when they did a... Uh, that that what's that TV show with Helen Hunt? Mad about you when mm-hmm. he came? I was like, man, that's that backstabber from from <laughs> Alien. <laughs> Look out, Helen! He's gonna yeah. cheat on you. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's do one more. Um, K D Katie like a laugh tweets. Amazing locations that made you want to travel there. For me, it was Mamma Mia. I'm still on your movie from before. It's uh, Lord of the Rings, New Zealand. Never been. Want to go. That's a good one. Uh, anytime I see uh, one of those Disney movies, like the monkeys or the lions or something like that, I want to go on a safari, man. I want to see. I want to see nature in the African, in in the wild. I want to see. I want to be face to face with a lion, with a tiger. I want to because you see them at a zoo and they're just going through the motions. Like I want to see what they look like on the actual plane. Take me in a jeep, drop me off on like you know in like a tree or something, and then I'll just kind of spectate from above. They can't climb trees, right? Yeah, you, you wouldn't do that. What are you talking? I would totally do that. And miss the, your playoffs? An African safari? Well, no, the NBA, the Spurs are out of it. So no, I got right. like a three month window. I can go to Africa if anybody wants to fly me there. Dennis? Uh, this wasn't, <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't a, a, a great movie, but couples retreat when they go visit that one vacation that tropical gorgeous. island. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm sure that's the reason why that's they, why did, they the, went, yeah. did the movie. They're like, because their, yeah. their friend uh, Peter Bingsley uh, directed that movie, and they're like, okay. Let's have a movie and have all our friends go visit yeah. there. I think that's why they, they got they f- it done. They forgot they were shooting. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, for, forgetting Sarah Marshall, too. Uh-huh. Uh, that's uh, what it I really say. paints Hawaii in a nice, positive yeah. light. Sinead, uh, is there a movie that makes you want to uh, go Lord of the visit? Rings is a really good one. Now, this is obviously not realistic, but um, Harry Potter. Like, I really, really wanted to go to Hogwarts. And I <laughs> legitimately became so obsessed with the idea when the first Harry Potter movies came out. Um, and I just, I wanted so badly for someone to replicate that, that town, the, the castle. And so when Harry Potter world came out in Orlando, I was like, Oh my God, let's go. And so we drove down there and it was by far like one of the best experiences awesome. ever. So if you haven't been to Harry Potter world yet, they're opening one this year, right? It's no, already open. Open. It's already open. The open? one in Hollywood already open. Did you get okay. a wand? I, I did not get a Aww. wand. The guy giving out wands is pretty cool. But the ride in the castle is by far the greatest ride you'll ever ride in your life. It's awesome. Right. So are you going to get a season pass to the one here in Hollywood? No, no I'm not that desperate. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Other people are. Yeah. They well, go. yeah, I mean, go do it. But like, yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> they make you, they make you watch Titanic while you're on it. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. Uh, I want to thank the people joining us at the table today. Mark, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at the World Famous Comedy Store Saturday night in the original room and online at Mark Ellis Live. And as Christian pointed out later on today, the movie trivia showdown: Scott Mance versus Dangerous Dan Merle. It's going down epically. Can't wait to check it out. Christian, you can find me at the world famous Harloff House playing Uncharted 4 the entire weekend. Uh, Christian Harloff, <laughs> both Twitter and Instagram, like Mark said, if you haven't watched the Schmodown, this is one to start with, man. You got these two guys. You like movie knowledge and you want to test yourself. Play against Manson Merle today, 2 p.m. And Sinead, where can people find you? I'm at Sinead DeFries on Twitter and Instagram. I'll be here every Friday and also on Mondays for Collider TV Talk. There's their buddy. Uh, hello, hello, Sausage. Hey, Sinead, let's go to Harry Potter land. (laughs) We can watch Titanic. Uh, Yeah, okay. All right. (laughs) And anyways, you can find me on Twitter at ThinkHero or Instagram, Dennis.TZ. How come he doesn't get the sausage? (laughs) Hey, Dennis, I want to be your friend. Uh, Because I'm not as enthralled with it as you are. Oh, yeah, that's Um, true. That's true. And don't forget, we actually put up our X-Men Days of Future Past uh-huh. commentary on the channel today. That, or not today. We put up yesterday mm-hmm. with Mark Ellis, John Schnepp, uh, John Campia, and Josh McCuga, I think, makes appearance as well. We also, reminder, the Captain America Shield contest giveaway in our YouTube description. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Collider Videos. And we'll see you guys next week. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.